Greetings our friends, welcome to Props and Wheels and to another review of a toy grade 3 channel helicopter. If you have been watching the previous episodes, you may already know that I am punishing myself for crashing my nice WAL Toys V912 helicopter flying it outdoors and then damaging it. It was all my fault and as a punishment, I have been reviewing toy grade helicopters, 2 channel, 3 channel and I am moving up to 4 channel very soon. This Sky Rover Vigilante 3 channel helicopter I got from Amazon. It was a deal on Amazon Warehouse. I think it just had some box damage like you see here. But everything is sealed and new. And they were selling it for $15. Free shipping and with the tax it was about $16. It is I think a great deal. Compared to the yesterday's which was a SEMA S109G because that one was used through Facebook Marketplace and it also had an infrared transmitter. This here has a 2.4 GHz transmitter. So that means that you have much better control of it indoors as well as outdoors if you are willing to fly it outdoors. Of course it needs to be calm weather. The only issue is this really looks like a toy if you look inside. It is very futuristic and plasticky. Let's open it up and see if it's a good one. So here are all the contents. The helicopter itself, as I mentioned, it looks and feels very plasticky. But hey, it is supposed to have a 2.4 GHz transmitter. And let's check out the transmitter. Yes, we don't see any LED lights on top or infrared LED on top. So it means that this is a 2.4 GHz most probably. So that's good. And this one is also very plasticky. So, oh, interesting. So they put a spring load mechanism to the throttle. So that if a kid is playing, probably this is a safety feature in case this is being played by a kid. If they panic and let go, instead of uh, just this keep flying, this will go down and then the helicopter will land itself or, or basically crash. And the right stick controls Unlike the 4 channel helicopter, not the bank, right left bank, but right and left yaw, meaning that it's just going to rotate right or left depending how you push it. And then forward and backward, which is controlled by this uh, tail rotor blade and motor to just change the angle and then fly back and forth. So 3 channel helicopters are not that great if you are planning to move over to 4 channel helicopters in the hobby because this will teach you bad habits you know in a mode 2 4 channel helicopter the left stick has the yaw not the right stick the right stick has the right and left banking what else do we have in the package a very nice instruction manual not that long but uh, the English is good and Probably it has been proofread and or translated properly. And then we have a spare set, half set of rotor blades, main rotor blades. I say half set because with these helicopters, one is a type A, like uh, rotating clockwise, and the other one is type B, rotating counterclockwise. So they are only giving one of each instead of two, you know, full set of each. And then we have a tail rotor blade spare. For the tail rotor, usually it's very difficult to break that. But if you crash hard, this may pop off and you may lose it. So it's good to have a spare. And then finally, two plastic linkages that links the fly bar for stabilizing the helicopter in the air to the upper rotor blades. So you see these parts, one here, one on this side. So they may pop off and you may lose them. So you have the spares. And finally, a charging cable that goes directly to the port on the bottom over here like this and then this end goes to your USB on your computer or a USB adapter. Unfortunately this doesn't have 
any batteries that you can replace and keep flying. So every time the battery depletes, you have to charge it. And this transmitter, let's see how many batteries it takes. It only takes three AAA batteries. And it doesn't have a charging cable, unlike yesterday's SEMA S109G. So you cannot charge it directly from the transmitter. You always need the charging cable as well as a USB port to charge it. But this is very common with toy grade helicopters, which I do not recommend for starting the hobby. If you are just buying some kid a toy, or you just want to play around with no intentions of staying in the hobby, or going up to four channel helicopters, then this is fine. But if you are planning this as a hobby in the long term, this will give you bad habits and it will be also a disservice to the hobby grade helicopters because, you know, these, these fly okay, but they are not great. Let's turn on the transmitter. So it is blinking. There should be some residual battery. So I'm going to turn this one on. I don't see any light coming on, which is not a, never a good sign, but I'm going to do, go through the steps anyway. Go up and down. And nothing. So there is a possibility that this may never fly today because um, the battery may have depleted. And if it's an old battery, we may not be able to charge it at all. So I'm going to connect it to the charger now and see if it is going to come back to life. So the red light on the charging cable turned on, means that it is charging now and I'm just going to wait until this light goes off and hopefully we'll have some juice in the battery. The battery is fully charged and ready to go. Hopefully it will have any juice. Let's turn the helicopter on. Okay, that's a good sign. The light is blinking. Let's put it on the helipad, turn on the transmitter. And the light is blinking, and the other light is fast blinking. So I'm just going to go up on the throttle, down, and the blinking on the helicopter stop, as well as the red light on the transmitter stop. So it should be ready to go. Let's see if it flies. Oh yeah, it does fly. You just have to make sure to keep the throttle where it's supposed to be. You cannot let it go because it's just going to come down. It's kind of drifting a little backwards, but maybe it is because of the air currents creating in this uh, small room. And it's also just slightly drifting to the left. So I'm going to give a little bit of a right trim. And as you see, it is dead stable and moving slowly forward. That's good. So let's see how fast the yaw is. Actually now it's rotating a little to the right. One cut to the left. Good. So this is a full rotation to the right. Full rotation to the left. Full forward. And full backward. Not bad. For a three channel helicopter. Let's move it around a little bit. Fly it for fun. Of course, the 2.4 GHz controller makes a big difference. Although this transmitter feels really tiny in my hand, so. <laughs> It is uh, for the hands of a uh, little kids probably, not an adult, so. But other than that, it's a good one. I wish the transmitter was a larger and also the throttle wasn't as spring-loaded like this. Maybe I can open the transmitter later and see if I can just uh, unhook the spring that's pulling it down because I'm uh, constantly putting pre up pressure to keep it up. So it is uh, again drifting a little to the, to the right. I don't know why the gyro is not keeping it from drifting. Maybe it's not sensitive enough, I'm guessing it's not sensitive enough. 
And it looks cute. I like the orange and black and slight white it has. Let me try to bring it a little closer to the camera. It has only just one single white LED light in the front. And nothing on the back as you can see. So if you are planning to fly it in the dark, you know, if it is going away from you or sideways, even coming towards you, you are not going to be able to gauge the orientation of it. First of all, you won't be seeing anything if it is really dark and it's going away from you. But since there is only one light, you know, you cannot really tell which way it's facing. It's coming towards you or to the diagonal a little bit. And I had that before with some mini drones. I had a twin drones from JJRC. One of them has two lights, one of them has a single light in the front. The one with two lights is so much easier to fly at night because the distance between those two lights is an indication which way it's flying towards you or maybe towards your right or left. The one with a single light is difficult to rotate back and come back, bring it back towards you. So this will, I'm assuming, has going to have the same issue. Okay, let's check out if I can uh, actually land it, this ground effect on the helipad. When it gets closer to the ground, you know, there's a lot of um, ground effect and then with the three channel helicopter, it's kind of difficult usually. Okay, oh well, <laughs> I land on its side. But, hey, I take it. Uh, it's always difficult because you cannot bank it right to left to adjust like a centrit on the, on the helipad. You're always going like rotating it and then trying to get to the center, but most of the time you end up overshooting. So next what I'm going to do is uh, check the weather outside and if it is calm and dry tonight, I'll take it out for another flight and add that video right here. It has been way too breezy in the last couple days, so I decided to try the outdoor flight in the evening, although it is still six to seven miles per hour right now, but I'm kind of hiding behind our, our house and also the, the lights, the street lights are providing a little bit of uh, light. I hope you can see what I'm going to do now. So there are no cars coming. Let's do it in the middle of the street. <laughs> Don't do this at home. I'm a professional. <laughs> right. It's All right, it's getting tossed around. This is full forward, still going forward and it's flying towards. Uh, okay. Didn't go too well. Ended up uh, in our neighbor's front steps. Okay, one more time. Yeah, it doesn't take breeze too well. It is tough to control. And you have to take off really quickly, especially when it's breezy, because it doesn't have much stability close to the ground because of the ground effect. So, quick takeoff. Alright, I'm fighting against the breeze. Also the spring loader trial is not making it easy to control the hover. So this is full forward. I'm trying to stay close. Yeah, it can fly outdoors but it just needs to be only a couple miles per hour. This is a little too much. I would recommend not more than three miles per hour. So this is still full forward and this is great for indoors but not so great for outdoors when there is some breeze. But hey, I promised an evening flight. Here is your evening flight. Time to land it. Let's go inside and do the final verdict. So what is the final verdict? If you are looking for a toy grade helicopter, for a kid or for yourself, maybe you are never going to go into RC flying hobby. This is a good choice as long as you can get it for $20 or less. 
Right now it is selling on Amazon for $39.99, $40. Free shipping, but then you have to pay tax, so it's over $40. And for $40 or a little bit more, you can get a nice four-channel helicopter that you can start with. And I will put a couple links up here and recommend those helicopters that I really like. You know, four-channel helicopters that have the proper controls. Bang on the right stick, yaw on the left stick. With this one, you will be gaining bad habits. So don't do that. It is a good toy because it has 2.4 GHz controller. This is a big plus. It looks kind of funky, but I think kids will like the design, not maybe adults. It is a definitely a good quality helicopter in terms of toys, but not a good choice if you are planning to start the RC hobby. So that's it folks. If you have any questions, any comments, any requests, please leave them down in the comments section. And I hope to see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye-bye.